Yeah, I just bought a car on Saturday, a new Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. I wasn't planning. I was planning on just going to the de dealership to check out colors and you sure. know, figure out figure yeah figure out what I wanted. Well, Madeline was in her soccer gear still. Uh, I mean, we just went right out right afterwards. So she was in, in cleats and it, you know she was very uncomfortable while we were there. But the uh, the salesman. She doesn't bring a, like, a change of slides. Oh, you need to put those she, in her bag. I know she sometimes does. She's a hot mess. <laughs> so sometimes her bag has flip flops and yeah change and, yeah. Not yeah, this. no. Before, before Izzy walks out of the, out, of the, out of the house, I'm like, I'm checking that bag. We're yeah. going to make sure you got everything. Because yeah. we got to do errands still, mm -hmm. <laughs> or whatever. So this, the salesperson's like, you know, at least or at least our own. And he's like, I because he he had just um, bought a um, similar vehicle and he, uh, and he leased. I was like, no, no, <laughs> not yeah. lease. I've never leased. You know, I've got a math degree. <laughs> it's just, it's just, and I'm not I'm not swapping out cars every two years like he is. And right. so a lease makes yeah. sense for for that. Like, no, I keep yeah. my cars for, you know, well, this last car was only four years, but usually at least five years. Yeah, I walked in, uh, last time I bought a car was the uh, the Mustang, and I walked in with the check, and they looked at me for an hour and a half like like I was weird or something. Like, I don't know what you're supposed to do with this. This is, <laughs> I could ex we could accept this? I don't yeah. I don't understand. It's, it's paper. I, you, you could sign a paper. <laughs> I mean, with that works, but you can't give me a paper. I don't understand. It's ridiculous. Ron says, I can do math, no lease or timeshares. We, we agree. <laughs> timeshares are even worse. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what, the one thing I hate about, uh, you know, hotels, and especially hotels in Mexico, are the timeshare people. And obviously the timeshare people out on the boardwalks and beaches and stuff. Well, I like the soccer. <laughs> but the timeshare situation for tours is horrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we have lots of openings. For our questions, this could yeah. be a quick office hours if y'all don't ask questions. Because if y'all don't have questions, then we're not going to sit and ramble about kids soccer for an no. hour and a half. Although we especially. probably could, it would be very entertaining for everyone else. Yeah, especially since I can get back to my client work that I need to finish. <laughs> we only have one question in the queue, so get your questions in. It's it well, it's whatever time it is. It's 15 um, after the hour, so let's get started. Okay, now we have two questions. All right. Gary has a question. What are your thoughts on offline file database and log backup solutions versus VSS snapshot backups? We've used Redgate for years. It's worked great and it's my preference, but our company switched to storage craft VSS snapshot backups based on our MSP's recommendation. VSS solutions seem to be difficult to manage with the mounting of the drives to get to the MDF and LDF file. I, I'm not familiar with storage craft. Um, I, I don't care how your full backups are happening. Um, especially on larger databases, it becomes very challenging to do SQL Server native backups or you know Redgate backups or any of the um, those type of software um, because of how long they take. So I do like snapshots, like you know, a VM snapshot or a SAN snapshot. I don't know if StorageCraft is doing that, but you have to ensure that it's uh, it's freezing the I/O for your da uh, database files so that the MD your, your data files and the log files are at the same point in time. You know, it's quiescing them. And so you'll see those messages in the SQL Server error log. SQL Server will notice IOs being frozen. And then you'll see resume messages. And that's what you want to see um, if these are good backups. Um, otherwise, they're, um, I forget what they're called, but basically you know, dirty backups that you may not be able to recover from. So you have to freeze IO um, and resume it with the um, solution that you've picked. Um, I just forget what that's called. Log backups? I, I don't know. As if, if, if I'm a DBA, I, you know, I don't know if Gary is a DBA or a sysadmin, but if I'm a DBA, I'm going to have control of those um, you know, differentials and log backups. Well, probably, you know, log backups, at least. I, I need to be able to restore quickly. You know, that's one of my one of my jobs in the case of a, an issue happens. Sysadmins, I can I can see wanting to not use SQL Server technology, so I don't know. It just, it just depends on, on, the, on the situation. Um, but the full backups, I can see why people you know, need to use other solutions if you've got large backups, large databases, I mean. All right. Christopher asks, we have a 2012 availability group and database mail job was run and took over 24 hours before someone killed it. It's been in rollback since Tuesday with wait type, blah, blah, blah. According to our database tools, which is SolarWinds, it doesn't seem to be locking or blocking. I, 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 I've never seen this situation. I, I would recommend that you post the question out on Stack Exchange 
whatever that is, dba.stackexchange.com, and someone may have encountered the issue. If it uh, doesn't seem to be locking or blocking, if, if it's not causing a problem, I don't know, just leave it there. Are you able to still use database mail for whatever you're using it for? Um, and then just wait for a restart to occur down the road, and hopefully you're doing patching every now and then so the restarts aren't that far off. All right, Gary, uh, is this a different Gary? Sorry, same Gary, all right. Secondary question regarding BSS database backups. Should the database be in full or simple recovery model? And Gary, I love it. You said recovery model instead of recovery mode. Since there's no log backups occurring, I assume the point in time recovery comes from the mounting the drive at this. So if, if you are using full or bulk log recovery models, you are required to do log backups. And if nobody's doing that, so you're going to eventually blow out the, the transaction log is going to grow and grow and grow and fill up that drive. Um, so it just it just depends if you need point in time recovery or not. Um, you know, is it okay if you restore to the last full backup or differential? If if it is, then go ahead and use simple recovery model. If it's not okay, you must use full or bulk log. And I don't I I, I typically um, I, I swear, I've never even used bulk log uh, because point in time recovery is so critical and you lose uh, recovery points with bulk log. So full and then do log backups per your RPO goal, your data loss goal. So it's, it's very common these days to see log backup jobs running every five to uh, every five minutes, sometimes even every minute. So you, do, you, you must add log backups through whatever tool you want to use for that. <laughs> Joseph says, can you explain the offsides rule in, so in soccer? <laughs> yeah, actually, I could. Even even our kids since, could. <laughs> since, since Brent's not here, maybe I should probably do it. It's, it's really simple. So the offensive player at the point of a pass uh, needs to be uh, equal to or or uh, in front of the last two defenders. That's it. Right. Last two defenders or last defender? Last two defenders, because the goalie's included in that. And oh, gotcha, okay. Up. Yes. So it's okay. got to be the last two defenders. <laughs> I was and like, wait a minute. Goal. Does Florida do it different? <laughs> no, no, no. And that's I why I say it. the last two defenders, because yeah. the, it's usually just the one because the goalie's behind. Right. But if the goalie has come up for some reason, mm -hmm. then it's the it's the last. So they, they, the rules say last two defenders. Okay. There you go. Awesome. All right, Joseph asks, what's your latest preference on a monitoring product? Different products seem to do different things better than others. What do you like currently and why? I, I, a lot of the monitoring tools are, 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 are really great. They're expensive for a reason, and they just leapfrog each other as far as features. One product, a product will have a new release and add a new feature, and then another, another competing product will get that feature, plus they'll have other features, new features, so they leapfrog each other. I've used uh, Century One's Performance Advisor and Quest Spotlight and Foglight tools in the past. We've got clients using IDERA um, Diagnostics Manager, and they seem to be happy with. Some people are using um, SolarWinds. That doesn't seem to provide the level of features that those other three tools that I, I um, you know, three companies that I mentioned. Um, some people are using New Relic. Um, I'd say it's all over the place, and we don't we don't really say you know, here's the products we recommend. Um, you know, did, did you guys see which which um, product provides you uh, the monitoring that you need for that system. Yeah, and the tools we provided are not monitoring either. So just throw that out there. <laughs> Ron asks a good question. What are your thoughts on parameterization, simple force, and optimize for ad hoc workloads? So I like optimize um, for ad hoc workloads to, to be enabled just as a best practice. Just get that out of the way. There's only like one edge case where it may not work for you, and that's if you always had two execution plans. But um, so yeah, I enable it basically, you know, anytime you install SQL Server on a production box. The the parameterization um, I like also, but there's some there's a downside to it. So let me describe what what force parameterization is. So um, the default for databases is simple parameterization. Any ad hoc queries that are coming in, they're going to be at, you're going to get ad hoc query plans and very little plan reuse of those um, for ad hoc queries. They'd have to be an exact match, even for these um, values being passed to you know, your your search predicates, your where clause jo where clause join conditions. Um, so you know, where column one equals ten, where column one equals two, those would generate a different execution plan if they were ad hoc. Now, force parameterization was introduced, I think, gosh, in like SQL 2012, maybe, maybe 2008. Um, it, it's not that old of a feature. Uh, you can enable that at the database level for SQL Server to convert your ad hoc queries um, to be param parameterized. 
but there are some limitations to it. Um, there's an MSDN article that you can read about the limitations, but there's a, there's a downside to it, and the downside is now those ad hoc queries are vulnerable to parameter sniffing, which they um, you know, were not before because it was optimizing you know, each time, you know, optimizing compiling the execution plan each time it needed to create a new um, query plan. But now you're going to be reusing query plans just like you would with parameterized queries, such as store procedures, prepared statements, um, things like that. So that they are now vulnerable to parameter sniffing. I've had a client who um, had um, over 90% sequelization basically at all times during their busy hours, and they had ad hoc query plan issues. I mean, just thousands and thousands and thousands of ad hoc query plans. They had they had high compilations um, per second, and we enabled forced parameterization on the fly. Um, during the day, which we normally don't do as part of our critical cares, um, very occasionally we'll, we'll, we'll make a change because this one's low risk, and immediately their CPUization dropped from 90% down to 60%. Now, there were other changes that they could make to the system, but that gave them some breathing room. You know, they no longer had the, you know, the extreme CPU pressure. All right, Gary says he's a DBA developer. The VSS is doing the IO freeze. Our snapshot backups, full backups. Yeah, as long as you see that IO freeze, you're good. <laughs> Richie's frozen now. <laughs> All right, it's the start of the pass. Or, or, okay, I don't know what that is. Okay, oh, gotcha, Richie answered. Daryl says, according to SB Blitzverse, our server ex is experiencing page IO IO latch waits due to slow reads. If our VMware host and SSD SAN is not reporting any problems, what else should I be, should I be looking at? Um, so based upon my experience with working on severe, worked on this a lot. Um, the problem is not always at the SAN, you know, the disk level or somewhere in between. It, it can be on the Windows box itself. Um, and so one particular instance where we had severe IO issues. You know, I opened a case with Microsoft, the SAN team opened up a case with their vendor, and we even had a, another vendor, um, I, think, I think HP was also involved. Um, Microsoft had us update the um, IO subsystem on Windows, the firmware drivers and BIOS, is, you know, and store port file, anything IO related on the, v oh, it was, wasn't the virtual machine, but on the Windows box itself got updated, and that resolved the performance problem. Um, so Microsoft, um, if you open a case with them, that, it, that may be where they tell you to start. Now, this was about 10 years ago on, you know, on a um, support case with them, but you may want to start there because that's just an easy, it can be an easy win, and that may be what Microsoft tells you to start with first. They can run tools to help you diagnose where the problem is. I, I, I don't know if they've renamed the tool, but there uh, used to be a tool called ETW Trace that um, you can run with the help of them to analyze that data, and it'll tell you, is the I.O. problem on the server itself? or external to the server. Uh, and SSD SAN, you know, that, that doesn't give you the best performance out of SSDs. You know, there, there, there's bottlenecks there. And it's, you, you are asking about a, um, you know, a VMware um, a virtual, virtualized system, so you update the IO subsystem on the guest, the virtual machine itself, and the host. You know, there's, there's two layers there, so making sure everything's up to date. Firmware, dryer, firmware, firmware drivers, and BIOS. I'm actually um, working with a client this week that's experiencing that same alert in SB Blitz first, and I'm telling them to start with the IO subsystem on, on the Windows box and the host server. Steve says, Richie, th thanks for the Python recommendation a few weeks ago. It's great. All right. <laughs> yeah. Christopher asks, is SQL Constant Care licensed per user or per, or, or per SQL server? I have several SQL servers and only one of me. I'll let Richie answer that. Constant care is easy. Per user, we get uh, lots of servers from people, and they send in all their stuff, and we send them all recommendations every day. Yep. And I think that Brent hasn't set a limit on number of servers yet, but you know, he he, he may uh, may in the future. I don't, I don't think so yet. Um, yeah. yeah, I haven't. Uh, yeah, he does a lot of the business stuff, and he says, "Go, you go make this work." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he can figure that type of stuff <laughs> or, or makes those rules. Yeah, and then I'm like, I don't know. I can't know. I'm, wait, uh, yeah, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> later, two weeks later, it comes back. Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, and, and if there's no limit, you know, and if you've got a lot of SQL servers, um, you, just, you sign up. It's a very cost-effective um, solution to help you with your environment. I, when I worked at Qualcomm many years ago, not that many years ago, but we had 700 SQL servers that um, that we supported. We had, we had a few, you know, several DBAs to support that, but you know, I could have signed up for an account to constant care and got mentoring advice on all 700 servers. Not that I want to. But yeah. <laughs> there. Well, that's when Brett, Brett, Brett was like, uh, maybe we will restrict it. Now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think at that point we're like, well, yeah. I, I think we do have some users with a, a bit of servers. I don't think anything you know that high. No, no. no. <laughs> Gary um, says the availability groups on 2017 standard edition seems like a pain, given the offline status of the secondaries and the one database per group limitation. Is it worth it? I mean, it's worth it if you if, uh, if so. We're talking about basic availability groups since this is a standard edition. So, sure, there's some pains, but um, you know, what's your alternative for whatever you're using the availability group for? So it can, it, 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 it's a solution for HA or um, disaster recovery. So high availability or disaster recovery, both of those are available with basic availability groups. Whereas database mirroring, in order to get the DR support with an async mirror, that was an enterprise edition feature. Uh, availability group, basic availability groups gives you synchronous and asynchronous. So uh, it is a solution for HA and DR. It is one da database per group, um, and you don't get to use it as a re readable secondary. But hardly anybody, uh, you know, out of the people who are using availability groups, regardless if it's standard or enterprise, most people are not using the readable secondary replica, at least from what we've seen with our clients. Some people are, for sure, but not, not a lot. Most people are using it for, uh, you know, HADR. Uh, yeah, I don't know, know about the... Um, the questions Ron, Ron has about constant care. Um, I, 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 I don't know either. Um, <laughs> recent polling leads me to believe that probably, um, but uh, send an email to help at and uh, we'll get that answer to you. All right, that's all the questions. So we're going to end, end here. If, if you had any questions and just didn't realize that we, we would run out of questions next week, get your questions in earlier. So we, we are out of questions. Have a good one. And it's lunchtime. <laughs> See ya.